We have a fragrance haul. Let's smell. Welcome back to Stop and Smell. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I really appreciate all your support. This fragrance haul is featuring four fragrances. It's on the budget friendly side, as low as $5 up to mid 30s. These were all blind buys. However, this is not my first impression. I have worn these fragrances throughout the week. The first one is a mall fragrance, meaning you can buy this at a store in the mall. From Abercrombie and Fitch, no, it's not fierce. This is away. You may not have heard of this one because it's a 2021 release, so it's fairly new. On fragrance discount sites, you can get this one for anywhere from 20 to 30 for the 1.7 ounce or for this 3.4 ounce, 30 to $40. The bottle's okay. It has a nice blue colored juice inside. I'm not sure about this thing here. It's a little bit weird to, well, I guess to prevent from overspraying, but it just seems odd. Top notes, violet, grapefruit, pineapple. Mid notes, geranium, ginger, pepper. Base notes, vetiver, woody notes, sandalwood. Let's smell. The opening is very bright, citrusy, aromatic, clean, a little brisk, a little airy, very light. I do pick up a lot of that grapefruit and a little bit of that pineapple in the background, but mostly grapefruit. In the mid, it's very fresh and spicy from the ginger and the pepper. It's a little green from the geranium, but it's mostly ginger and pepper. The dry down is very clean and woody. I don't get much of the vetiver in the dry down but I do pick up woody notes it's a very clean woody dry down this fragrance projects well for the first 30 minutes after that it gradually diminishes it lasted on my skin for about four hours after the third hour it's more of a skin scent it's a very light fragrance it's very subtle you're not going to expect any large projection this one is very office friendly it's not going to offend anyone it's all ages it's all seasons but most likely summer and spring are best suited for this fragrance because it's so light. When you think about this Abercrombie and Fitch, you're not going to think fierce. You're not going to think sexy or annoying. You're not going to think youthful. This one is not for someone who's looking for something sexy and attention getting. This one is for someone who's looking for something that's subtle, office friendly, fresh, clean. It does remind me of a nice shower gel. Not a cheap one, but a really nice one. Will this one garner compliments? Probably, if they could smell it on you, because it is fresh, it is clean, it's very inviting in the sense that it won't offend you. Overall, this is an okay fragrance. It's not the best, it's not the worst, it's somewhere in the middle. It's fresh, clean, a little fruity, and a little woody. This one would be great after the shower. You're going to smell good, clean, fresh after the gym, in the morning. Nice little pick-me-up. This is probably not the best choice for for formal occasions or for going out at night. This is more for casual, day-to-day -day wear, any season. This next fragrance was actually a viewer's choice. On a comment, Ernesto Taquita said, have you come across Tahari fragrances? I saw some at Ross. It would be great if you make a video on these. Up until that point, I had never come across Tahari fragrances, but I did spot this one, Tahari Red Musk. The notes are actually on the back of the box. Tahari for Men Red Musk unwraps with an energizing citrus aroma of mandarin and lemon before blending down with a spicy and woody scent of cinnamon atop a base of vanilla and tonka bean. The bottle looks okay. It's in a nice red color. Pretty plain bottle. It just says Red Musk across the front. This one was $10. Let's smell. 
The initial blast does not contain heavy alcohol smell. That's always a good sign, especially for a cheap fragrance like this one. It's actually nicer than I expected. For $10, you really don't expect much for these kind of fragrances. The opening is bright and citrusy. You get a lot of the mandarin, and then you get more of that lemon peel. It's almost a little dusty, like a little dry. It doesn't take long for it at all to transition into the mid. That's where you get the spicy cinnamon. It sort of reminds Reminds me of Big Red Gum. If you ever chewed that flavored gum, in the dry down it gets a little sweet with vanilla, but overall it maintains that spicy cinnamon note. Projection is very light, maybe first 15 to 20 minutes. Longevity on my skin was about three hours, maybe three and a half hours, but after that, it's a very light skin scent, but it's very pleasant. This is going to be all ages. This is probably most suitable in the spring and fall. This is a very minimalistic fragrance. If you're looking for something with a cinnamon kick and a little fruity, citrusy touch with a little muskiness, it is a little musky in the dry down. For the price, it's not bad. $10, it's okay. I don't love it. I don't hate it, but I'm kind of surprised on how nice it smells. Obviously, this is not going to be for everyone. This is for someone who wants a specific scent, like cinnamon. You could do worse for $10. This one's not that bad. But again, these $10, $15 fragrances add up, and uh, are you wasting your money? That's one thing you gotta think about. It's okay to have cheap fragrances here and there, but don't spend all your money on cheap fragrances. Some of them are worth it. Some of them are not. For this one, I'm sort of in the middle. It may be worth it for some people. Overall, it's a nice cinnamon based fragrance with a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of citrus touch. For $10, not too bad. This next fragrance is a 2017 release from the house of Cremo, Bourbon, and oak. The notes are very straightforward. Top notes, spicy notes, mid notes, whiskey, base notes, oak. Again with this one, I don't detect any strong alcohol blast in the initial spray. The opening is very spicy. It doesn't specify which notes are used in the spicy notes, but it's something like a nutmeg or pepper, maybe even some cinnamon. This one also doesn't take long to go into the mid, and that's where you get the bourbon, whiskey, that booziness. It's a nice boozy touch. This one's not going to overwhelm you, meaning it's not like a strong pungent smell with the spices and with the bourbon. People aren't going to think that you're drunk or you've been drinking or you just came out of a bar. It's a nice, pleasant, spicy, boozy opening to mid. In the dry down, you get that clean, woody oak. It does project well in the first half hour. It lasted on my skin for about four hours. For the price point, which is $13, that's not too bad. This one would be great for the fall and winter seasons. I see this one being all ages. It's very masculine, but anyone could wear this one. It's warm, cozy, and boozy. I'm enjoying this one. It's a nice little surprise. And the last fragrance coming in at a whopping $5. Axe Africa, an aftershave. So technically it's not an eau de toilette fragrance. I did do a previous video where Axe Peace is actually a clone of Dior Fahrenheit. So you can check that out. But I was more interested in what this one smells like. I saw on Fragrantica that this one smells a little bit like Rocha Man or Versace Arrows. So is it true? Let's find out. Top notes, Mandarin Orange, Bergamot, mid notes, Geranium, Base notes, tonka bean, vanilla, sandalwood, musk, cedar. I haven't seen a bottle like this before. It looks like they've redone the bottle shape. This one has more of a cylindrical shape as opposed to the one for peace that I saw previously. Let's dab it. So it's there on my wrist. Okay, it's a very synthetic smell. Obviously, this is a very low-priced fragrance. There is an alcohol blast when you first smell it after you dab it. 
because it is an aftershave. So you're going to get some of that alcohol smell right away. It's a very citrusy, fruity opening. A little bit synthetic, obviously, like I said, but it's, it's pleasant. It's very fruity in the opening. The dry down is ultimately very fresh, but very sweet and a little bit musky. In the dry down, I do get the sweetness from the tonka bean vanilla combination and a bit musky too. Yes, it's very synthetic. Yes, it's very youthful. Of course, this is the demographic, teens, 20s, X. That's what you're going to go for. This is not going to be for everyone. This is for someone who likes fruity, synthetic fragrances. I don't mind it. I actually like it. It's an aftershave, so this is not going to last at all. It projects, what, for the first 10 minutes, if that. And it's a nice, pleasant skin scent, maybe for three hours. Now, as far as the comparison to Rochaman and to Versace Eros, I can see it's in the same vein. It does have a similar vibe. However, this one has a nice coffee amber presence. Axe Africa doesn't. Eros has a nice mint apple presence. Africa doesn't. So is it a clone of these two? No, absolutely not. Is it reminiscent of these two? Eh, a little bit. If you really use your imagination and really dig in and smell, it will remind you of certain aspects of these two. Mostly Rocha Man, but again, without that coffee or amber. So if you're a teenager or you're looking for something different for your aftershave, this might be for you. It's fruity, it's synthetic, but pleasant. It does have a nice fresh, crisp, yet spiciness to it. But overall, it's very fruity. If I had to narrow it down to my favorite one from this fragrance haul, it's absolutely Cremo, Bourbon, and Oak. For the price, $13, this is a nice gem. If you like those spicy, boozy, woody fragrances, this is going to be a good one. Have you tried any of these fragrances? If so, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, enjoy your fragrances.